In this video, I'm going to show you why the federal government won't end Social Security, at least not in our lifetime anyway. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! There's a lot of scary information out there about the end to Social Security. On this channel, in the comments, I would say one out of ten comments has some sort of reference to taking it now before it all comes crumbling down. In this video, I'm going to do a little bit of myth busting on this point, and hopefully in doing so, help you sleep a little bit better at night. First, let's talk about the year 2034. This is the year that people say the Social Security Trust Fund is going to go bankrupt. In 1983, there was a major renovation to the Social Security Trust Fund, and because of this renovation, it was set for the foreseeable future. At some point in this millennium, the date changed to 2034. But the reason is important because this one reason alone is why the Social Security Trust Fund very likely will be around far longer than you and me. And that is the average number of children that people were having went from three to two. It had nothing to do with people living longer. That was a minor contributor. But the big swing factor, and the actuaries could see it, was that the contribution was going to be two-thirds of what they were expecting back in 1983 because the Social Security system is a pay-as-you-go system. They don't use your funds to pay your retirement. They use the next generation's funds and maybe even the generation below that. With less funds coming in, that means that less money can get paid out. That somehow translated itself into the lore that the trust fund was going to be bankrupt. If nothing else changed, the contributions from those working now and in the future would cover about 80% of the cost of Social Security to those headed into retirement. So by definition, the downside scenario is that folks get four-fifths of what they get today. And next, I'm going to show you why even that scenario is quite unlikely. By the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. YouTube uses the thumbs up as its algorithm to raise videos in the search results, and I want to help as many people as possible. All right, back to the video. Now I'm going to give you data to back up what I just said. According to the Pew Research Center, 71% of voters oppose cuts in Social Security in any way. That's from March 2019 for those that want to look it up on the web. There's also very strong support from that same group to raise or eliminate the cap altogether on Social Security tax. The elimination of the cap would be enough to fund Social Security into the foreseeable future. Also, a bit of common sense, if the federal government just canceled Social Security, either now or in the future, there would be a lot of unhappy people, either because they have to worry about their parents or grandparents, or because they themselves have contributed to Social Security for a very long period of time, only to have that taken away from them. And these are voters, and voters have a tendency to remove people that make decisions that run contrary to what they themselves would like to have happen. Finally, there are multiple solutions to this problem that are quite easy to implement. The first is to raise the cap or eliminate it altogether, which I just mentioned. The second is to add 2% onto Social Security tax. By adding 2%, 1% paid by the employer, 1% paid by the employee, it's a manageable number, and if that was to occur, the Social Security Trust Fund would be solvent until 2075. In my next video, I'm going to talk about changes to Social Security in 2021, so make sure you click subscribe and notifications so that you get notified when I post that video. Also, check out this video right here. I show you the average retirement savings for a 62-year-old, and I also show you what the top 1% has in their retirement savings. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.